And I just want to say, if there was one slight that can really transform your magic and the way you do magic in a close-up sense, in my opinion, it would definitely be the cull for all of its versatility. And in today's video, we're going to cover how I personally handle the coal, my thoughts, and different additions from different places, sourcing everyone properly, and just have a little bit of fun with the coal and something that's very personal to me and, <laughs> if I can be honest, made my magic a lot easier and made me actually lazy. <laughs> In the good sense, of course. So, with that said, let's roll that intro. start with a quick demonstration of the cult itself. So cards can be started out in an impromptu manner. Not trying to control any cards to any position. This is really starting out impromptu. And the spectator has a choice of jacks, queens, kings, races. Let us just say for the sake of argument they say kings. Okay? And I try to make it seem as fair as possible that I'm not controlling the cards and I'm really not. Okay? So let's say they say kings. I was going to do aces, but let's say they say kings. And it's funny, there's an ace right there. Uh, uh, so let me just change the camera angle, hopefully. Okay, so I'm going to go across. And uh, the first one near the back of the deck is the king of clubs. That's the first one. Okay, the second one is the king of spades. That's right there. The third one is the king of hearts, de corazón in Spanish. Sorry if there's a little bit of a glare. I'm trying to work with what I got. And then the fourth one is the King of Diamonds. Uh, usually referred to as women's best friend. I don't know why, but uh, there you go. And nothing near the top. I want to try to be there where I can. Okay, and no funny moves. I just screw up the deck like that. And lo and behold, you can be dealing right off the top. I don't even need a thumb. I could really show it to you. One, two, three, four, four kings. Shin Lim kind of spread, or he popularized it. I think he's cool. Anyways, so that is uh, calling a full four cards or random cards you need to be when you need to control. So let's say three of hearts. Let's just make a random one. Three of hearts right here. You can see it. Yes. Okay. And we'll leave it right there. Nothing near the top. It's five of hearts. For contrast purposes, we'll place this five of hearts right down there. So you can see seven spades is now on top. Okay. No funny moves, just square it up, turn it over, and lo and behold, you got your three of hearts right on top. Very cool. So that's the basics of the coal, and it can do many more, and I have many more additions to it uh, later on in, in other culling videos I'm going to make. But for right now, the basics of the coal is to be able to control a card where you need it to go, or any position. It could be on top, it could be any, any local position or it can be set up to you know, palm off a card, whatever you need. So it's very, very versatile. So in the next section, we're gonna hop into a super quick uh, crediting, and then we're gonna hop into my take on the call. So yeah. So a quick thing on crediting, uh, just before we begin learning the call, um, I was inspired or had struggled for many years. There's been different people who have posted it. Daryl in his Encyclopedia of Card Slides Volumes 1 through 7 or 8. I can't remember. I think 7 or 5. I can't remember. So that's uh, that was my initial learning into it. I also encountered it in uh, Royal Road to Card Magic, uh, exp uh, Expert Card Technique, both by Gene Hugard and Fred Browie as well. And these are all sources you can look up or use to learning it. Uh, if you want to. Uh, there's been in other sources as well, more advanced ones. Those are the more basic ones where they focused on. And then Kotsia really advanced it with his DVD. And I say it relentlessly, relentlessly recommend it. He teaches it better than I can, even though we got some cool new setup we're doing just temporarily. He can teach it way better than I can and has the proper filming to really properly do it than I can do in this one, but this is just an overview of my style of it. And I even got some tidbits from John Armstrong. Um, I can't remember if it was his Real Magic Magazine tips or if it was from his Armstrong Magic Volumes 1 through 3 that he talks about it, 
but I have a little couple things on how he did the call. Um, and outside of all the sources, not putting John, Str John Armstrong down in any way, I love his magic to death and has had a huge influence on it. The only time I've ever been successful in actually learning the call and in all of its stuff is through Cold Sear Kinlock's DVD. That's the only time I've ever had success in actually getting this call down and not only getting it down, but being able to do multiple cards and then take, you know, it was so, I, once I learned it, he made it so easy to learn. And then I, this is not sponsored by the way, I was then able to advance his techniques even further to which uh, one, I'm gonna publish one thing he said not to publish because it was uh, taking the cull even further. And it's just one of the most, in my opinion, wonderful slides, or just a wonderful slide to learn. I highly recommend it. So with crediting, uh, most of crediting out of the way, I did my best to credit, at least I credited, don't hate me. Now we will begin into learning the cull in the next section. So I'm doing my best as a one-man army to uh, get the best viewing experience for the call, so apologies in advance, but I'll, I'm making an effort, okay? <laughs> so to call a card, uh, we first have, there's two, but the style I have a preference to, <laughs> excuse that, uh, the style I have a preference to is um, holding it long way, well, I do in a straddle, I tend to do my call in a straddle grip, that is to say, uh, so from a normal mechanic script, Okay, hopefully lighting is there, okay. So from normal grip, uh, you put your pinky behind, okay. It has trade-offs. Uh, there is a more open free calling. You could do that one. So whatever is your preference, you can do that. I just tend to uh, use it in a straddle grip, okay. So as you spread, and, and again, you can actually do it without the pinky and you can just do it whatever you feel like, okay. So let's say I'm just doing a straddle grip. I push it by cards, and uh, again, I will highly, highly, highly recommend Kotsia's DVD for this thing. That said, as you push off cards, okay, you're opening and closing, opening and closing every eight to ten cards, and you want to give the specter an idea of fairness. And this is being, uh, a, it's a covert action, it's a cover up. For the fact of when you actually do have to call a card, it comes. You can be able to steal it on pawn the close. And don't worry, I'll cover the actions. But you, you're opening and closing. So when you do steal out of the card, you're doing it on the pawn the closing, opening and closing. So it seems natural that you wouldn't uh, be secretly stealing on a card. And now to do that, uh, let's say we're going for a card. Um, let's say the Ace of Spades, and we don't know where it's at. That's the best way to practice. You don't know where it's at and you're just calling under those situations. And I'll cover different situations as well. So we spread on through, spread on through. I notice the ace of spades, it is right here. And how we're going to do the action is this card, the ace of diamonds, is going to come over and cover the ace of spades, okay? We will, I will cover uh, some John Armstrong tips on how to cover it from the underneath. But for right now, uh, we will take the Ace of Diamonds, or, or in this case, the Ace of Diamonds that's just right above it. Let me do a contrast. Uh, three diamonds, there we go. So it doesn't seem like it's too confusing. Okay, so we got three diamonds right there, and Ace of Spades right here, that Ace of Spades is the one we wanna call. Three of Diamonds comes over, squares itself with it, okay? So this three of Diamonds right here goes right in line with these, okay? And you're like, okay, but where's the call? So you use your fingers to slowly walk it on out. And I'm gonna to try to do it so you get better angle issues, or lighting issues, no lighting issues rather. And we use our fingers to just slowly pull that card out and you get a little click. If you're putting a lot of pressure, you get that click. And man, that was one of the best feelings I ever heard. And uh, if you're in a rush, you'll hear the click and it's nice, but Spectres won't hear it, you don't have to worry. So again, ace of spades right here, card comes over, Thumb puts, this is probably one of the most important things that prevent me from learning the cult. You have to put the thumb down. So after your your hand, the uh, in this case, the recessive hand comes over and squares it upon the card. Then your thumb clips it, okay? The dominant hand, thumb, hand, thumb clips it. 
and keeps the, it anything from moving, okay? Now the fingers walk that card out, okay? These are tips I wish I had learned, okay? So you walk it on out. And now you got the card right here, okay? And that is the Ace of Spades. We hopefully you can see. We okay. It's right there. And then now that you got the card, now you can start pushing all the rest of the cards. You could even do a little tip I do. This is my additions. I always show the top card saying, and I can even let go because this card, the, the Ace of Spades, right, is right here. You can clip everything. It all seems copacetic. There's all covered. And then I can say nothing on top. And I can show them one hand. Seems everything seems so fair. And it's like a yeah, nothing happened yet. Scroll it on up. This was not in the, the original Clotia DVD, I believe. It wasn't in it. So it's my own personal tip for you, for everyone here. It just seems so evil. So then when you square the cards up, do it ultra slow, and you've got that ace of spades on top. Isn't that so cool? So again, we'll, we'll try it with a different card. Let's say King of Hearts, okay? We're gonna spread on through. And look, King of Hearts is right near the top. You never know where you're gonna get. And I'm going to actually put second from the top, uh, just just to cover the situation. If you get it here, uh, Kotsia talks about it uh, in his DVD. Again, recommend, not sponsored. I just really like the guy's work and how brilliantly he fooled Penn and Teller on TV. <laughs> Anyways, so now we've got it here, and then we pull the card back. Okay, we pull the card back, so we say okay and we pull as we're dealing second card there's different ways of handling it um, some people just have their own ways but you can pull it back right here and then look so you do it like you're calling already and then add the other cards in the middle and then they just go right on over it and you essentially got the card right here so again in real time study so king of hearts okay and uh, and I'm not, and I pretend like if I know if it's gonna be there or if I happen to see it, I look away like I don't know, and then I slide it out a little bit right here, or you can tilt it up so they don't see it, and then add the other cards in, and then square it up so you so you can get you can push them right here to square it, so then you can get that cover for the King of Hearts being right there, and um, the other cards just go right above it, and there you go. You got that situation. Show it there. Do that. I think that tip uh, of showing the cards like that was an off, uh, offbeat gesture of John Armstrong. So I'll, I'll give credit to him for that. But it, um, just a really, really cool gesture just to be able to cull, show nothing's on top, be fair one hand, is square everything up very slow and turn turnover. It's just so cool. To me, anyway. Uh, so again, and I'll, and I'll now cover John Armstrong's tip. This is the right time to do it. So when you, you're culling, and let's say it's not at the beginning, you don't notice at the beginning, you can actually up jog a couple cards casually or just nonchalantly, and just as you're culling, like just almost roughly. So I would go like this, and I'm searching for the cards. Let's say it's 10 of hearts. I go, ah, oh, I don't see it yet. Do you see it now? Well and then you can do whatever you need and you have it on top. Maybe palm it off and do a prediction effect, whatever. But it's that the reason for this, for going up like this, going up with the cards, up jogging, or at any time you want to just up jog, there you go, it looks really messy kind of, if it's your style, is because it allows for more cover. So in case you didn't get a clean call, let's say I'm calling the five of clubs, okay, and I didn't get it cleanly, and then now I'm flashing right here, they can see a five of clubs. And having these cards up jogged cover for that, especially if you're doing multiple cards, then you can have this to your advantage to cover. Otherwise, without this cover, you could potentially flash, hey, what's, that, what's my selection doing underneath and just flying out of there? And so John Armstrong's tip helps in the beginning for that. So, so let's say I'm calling, let's make it a challenge. And it's the same gesture if you were to do multiple. So if let's say I'm doing, let's say all the twos, I don't know, let's just say all the twos. So I go through, okay, go the, the other card, cover card goes on top, dumb clips, fingers pull the card out, okay, keep on pushing. Next two, I go to it, 
Okay, I go to it. Two. Come over. Clip thumb clips. Fingers pull it out. Okay, that's number two. Uh, let me readjust my camera angle. Okay. Number three. Third two. Cover card comes over. Thumb clips. It's a whole process. Cover card comes over. Thumb clips. Pull it out. And it just goes right underneath the other two. It's almost automatic. It's pretty cool. And then last one, two of spades. I, this is my own gesture and tip, which I throw in here. So these are my additions to uh, culling. So if I, it's near the top, what I tend to say is, oh, it's uh, too close to the top. Let me put a couple cards down. And I really honestly do. And then I pull it back to show that to show that it's there. It doesn't affect the call in any way. The call cards are still there. And I say, okay, fair. Then they go, every audience goes fair. It's like he's really trying to be above board <laughs> while it doesn't even make a difference in the long run. I show everything. It shows fairness, square it up. So anyways, we've got three right here. We've got the last two right here. Okay, I put it a couple cards down, just as I said. Okay, and then I go in, call it out. It doesn't make a big deal. I can show the cards like this, square everything up fairly, and then lo and behold, I've got all four twos at your disposal, whatever effect you're going for. And yeah, it's just so great. You don't, like, I just think of the endless benefits to this, and, and, and it's just the ideas you can come up with. Now, knowing the coal, because ever since I learned it with Kotsia, and then made my own additions to it, which I'm putting here, um, as well as my own way to do the colon just in general uh, I've become a lot lazier in my magic in the sense that now I don't have to do setups and all these things and at a moment's notice uh, because I have an effect that was a magician fuller at the castle when I was there with all the uh, magicians there and it was my big bang opener and to know it was an eight card setup aces and jacks uh, and to be able to know that I can do that any time, all I have to do is just call the jacks and call all the aces just while talking to the spectators, setting up for casually. I don't need to, you know, they don't know anything that's going on, just looks like I'm going through the cards. And then, hey, do a, do a shuffle and a cut. And I swear no one thinks the wiser. And it just, I don't need setup anymore. I haven't had to use setup for like seven years. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's honestly crazy to think about. Like, seven years I haven't had to do a setup just because this is so convenient. And Kotsia's updates have really, really helped in doing it and stuff. So, uh, that's the culling so far. Uh, those are my additions. In the next video, um, and then what you can do with it, well, you got four cards on top. If you want to do Daryl's thing, uh, Dar well, Daryl popularized the gesture. Uh, you can riffle off the deck. One, two, three, four. Four cards, riffling off. Then you put your forefinger right here into the, the break that you created by riffling. Thumb clips it. Back pops up naturally. So again, one, one, two, three, four. Insert your forefinger into the break. Okay, I got it right there. Thumb comes over and clips it. The back will pop up naturally. And now you've got a break under four cards. You can do this casually while I'm just talking to you. Um, I could be talking about the presentation or whatever the effect is. And I just casually do it. Got it popped up right here. And now you can just go into whatever palming technique you go for. Uh, and I'm doing the Gene Hugard Fred Edward Browdy's technique taught in expert card technique. I just talk to them. Or I misdirect. I usually just misdirect because misdirect is just easier. I make a laugh. I look at them. I set it up. I, I, I structure it so that it's perfectly timed, and then I just go in for the palm, okay? And then say, hey, you know what, you want know to shuffle, give it, give it a little shuffle, they shuffle it, and I've got all four uh, twos in this context with me. I can set it in my pocket, I can do whatever I want with. Uh, culling to be able to out in the card, you can reverse, you can do that. There are just endless amounts of stuff you can do with the coal and not having a setup is just great. You can, uh, and I'm not gonna go into this, I just wanna cover the really rudimentary basics in my style of it, because Colsey goes even 
further with it. You can do red black separation. You can do totally face up to face down shuffle deck. Uh, I think he calls it Caligula Triumph, where you can just do it straight, literally face up in the face down kind of effects. And he starts off that way. That's how you fill Pen and Teller. Uh, it's in the, his DVD, which is just great. So with that said, I just want to give uh, my own touches and and different sources pulling together my own way of doing the call or the basics of the call so other people can do it. But if you want to learn further, I literally say very openly, you want the best, <laughs> just get Kotsia's DVD, not sponsored. And just a really cool guy. I've even hung out with them Went back, way back when uh, I was at the Tennis Magic Camp, believe it or not. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that said, I'm wishing everyone a wonderful day. In the next video, upcoming video, final now, I'm going to be releasing the special technique Kotsi said not to release, which is my colon and reversing technique. It is a magician fooling technique. I've tested it. I can confirm it's magician fooling. And it will allow you to do things that are just normally have to be done with gaffes. <laughs> and it, it seems simple, but it's really great. So look forward for that upcoming video. And with that said, wishing everyone a wonderful day. And if you haven't checked out this video yet or this video, check them out. And I will see you in the next video. Later.